You're watching MMA Odds Break. I'm Frank Trigg. That's Travis Marks. He just got home from training camp, and uh, I'm going to let him know it's okay if your kids get loud. It's okay if your wife comes in and hits you in the back of the head with a frying pan because you didn't take the garbage out. It's fine. On your end, on my end, if that happens, it's a whole different situation. But for you, it's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> How was training tonight? And it was, was good, it? man. What was it? So I'm just in cardio tonight, okay. just tapering off, just getting the last bit of everything under control, weight what's, getting down. What's your weight like? That was my next question. Um, about 15 over, 16. That's about normal. Is that good? Is that bad? Is that? That's about right. That's about where I. That's about where I sit at this point. Okay. Yep. Day of weigh-ins, you wake up. What are you gonna weigh? I'll be about four out day of. Oh, so lower. Okay. Which is yeah. which is actually kind of smart for a guy at 135 pounds. Yeah, yeah. I don't. The day of, I don't cut as much. The day before, I'll I'll do eight. Oh, eight or nine. still a huge amount. Jeez. Yeah. Like there's a because you look at a percentage of body size, and 135 pounds trying to make 135 pounds as opposed to a guy making 185 pounds doing that exact same is a different percentage. It's for your body weight. It's a huge percentage. Yeah, How do you percentage. recover? Like what do you do to recover from that? It's just the slow intake, as you know, you've been there, but yeah, you just can't throw everything back in like you may want to. Everything gotcha. just slow, slow back in. <laughs> have you done? Have you done it wrong in the past? You try to throw everything in oh, all at yeah. one time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. Where you just stuff in everything you can and want, and then it hits you like a brick. Yeah. An hour later, all of a sudden you can't eat, you can't move, your feet swell up, your hands swell up. Yep. What's that? And I still, I still usually swell, but it's usually the day after. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah, fine. At that point, who cares? That's no big deal then, right? What, uh, how much weight do you put on? Like, what are you going to walk in the, into the cage at? Uh, about 153, 152 to 153. Oh, so a good 18, you know, a good 18, yeah. 17 yeah. Pound, pound gain. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah. And then you, if any heavier than that, do you feel more sluggish? Yeah, yeah, I start to feel pretty. That That's where I feel the best and, and normally sit. I've, I have gone up to about 156 and you really feel that that extra three pounds just okay. sticks right on my butt well let's break down brandon bender that's who you have this next round of tournament that's uh who you're facing this next weekend break him down he's 11 and 0 but he's tough scrappy he's a he's real good all submissions yeah real good on the ground he's got he's got one decision he's got 10 submissions and one decision you know yeah. and it's but he's winning every single one of his fights so obviously he wants to put it on the ground absolutely where do you want to keep it if you had a choice? Well, we'll we'll keep it standing. That's I mean, obviously, yeah, that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna try and keep it. Unless he goes down unconscious, then we'll put it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, who cares? If he's down unconscious, it's you know, yeah, exactly. him a couple more times, it'll be over. Exactly. So, how do you think he's gonna try and get this to the ground? At some point, he's gonna realize that he's gonna have a difficult time taking you down. He's gonna he's gonna realize that it's a difficult task to shoot on you and take you down. So do you think at some point he's going to jump guard, or do you think he's going to concede the wrestling game and go, screw it, I have to, I have to just make this a stand-up game? You know what I think? I think initially um, that, that he'll probably concede and, and keep it, try and keep it standing. Um, but but I've, in, in his fights that I've seen, he tends to, even when he's standing and scrapping, he tends to, to shoot himself. If he wants it on the ground, he'll, he'll force a takedown even. Um, so I wouldn't be... I, I wouldn't put it past him to, to pull guard if he gets to a point where he's just not liking the stand-up game and unable to take me down. I, I don't see him not being a guy that wouldn't pull guard. He's good enough on the ground. I think he's going to try that. What uh, what extra preparation in your training camp have you dealt with to, to stop him from doing that to you? Um, I, you know, not necessarily to stop him from pulling guard, but, but working everything from having guys with guillotines on and deep, um, where where a guy like him is is dangerous, you know, where he may try and force something and, and reach sloppily for a guillotine, but they can lock it on because he's got those long lanky arms, um, as well as triangles. I've 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 been put in bad situations and made myself work out of them. And how has that been throughout the train camp? Is it is it made a couple of days coming home and you're just being like, man, today just sucked. I couldn't get out of anything, and then it's gotten better as camp's gone along. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's always those days, as you know. Uh, there's days where it's like, oh my gosh, I just. Everything was just, and my head feels like it was falling off. My jaw's dislocated, and yeah. but in the end, yeah, I, I, it's gradually gotten better, and I felt better and better, and more and more confident with it. You still at Jackson's training? I'm not. I'm okay. not. I actually, uh, kind of a long, long story to keep it short. Uh, my mother got cancer for the second time. Oh. Um, 
And so we decided we needed to get close to family, so we picked up and moved back to eastern Utah. I'm in a small town in eastern Utah called Vernal. Wow. Um, and then after coming here three, three and a half months ago is when I moved back, my father got cancer. So definitely a right move, and I'm glad yeah. that I'm back, but uh, more motivated than ever. Definitely not the same training camp that I used to have at Jackson's. It's, it's different. But the fact that I feel like at my stage and age of life, I'm probably not going to get that much better. It's just sharpening up some skills and going in and doing the best I can. And how has it been trying to find training partners up there? Because I know a lot of guys when they move, it's difficult finding guys that they can actually can get with, that can be there every day because they've got other jobs and other family commitments as well. And, and, and myself, I'm in that situation now because I'm working a 65 to 70, 70 hour a week job with an engineering firm. So I'm, I, yeah, training's been tough, I'm not going to lie, but I've, I know what it's like. I've been dedicated. I know when I've been doing it daily what I need to do, and I, I feel like I've been getting in everything I need. And training partners, as you mentioned, has been fairly tough, but there's some good talent in this little place, just guys that haven't been noticed. And so it's been great being able to train with them, and I think it motivates them to uh, try and get to that level as well. Who's going to corner you now that you're in a different location? Um, everybody was busy down in, in Albuquerque. Horn was, was uh, one of my first, well, he was my first uh, trainer, and, and he's here about three hours away. He's unable to do it because he's got a prior commitment. So I've got a strength coach from down in Albuquerque that will be traveling, and then one of the training partners here. I'm going to take him and let him experience the bigger show. Well, good for you. Get a little, little old school, little middle school. Can I get to feel that it out? It is. You know what? And that's what I said. I kind of going back to my roots back when – it's not been a big thing for me. I haven't even had time to follow up with many people, so only the closest people to me even know I'm fighting and hasn't been a big social media thing. I'm just, I said I'm going right back to my roots and going in there to bang and have fun when it's not my livelihood now. Well, you know, it's, it's tough when you have a 60-hour to 75-hour, you know, 70-hour a week work job to be on social networking because between yeah, that absolutely. and training and the kids, like when are you going to Facebook? When are you going to put out a post on Twitter? Like it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I responded to my first Twitter thing tonight. I, I said thanks to a couple guys, and then I had like four more people hit me. Hey, you never messaged me back. I'm like, yeah, they don't understand. I've been really busy. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, Travis, thanks for coming on here and spending a couple minutes with us. I really appreciate talking to us here at MMA Oddsbreaker, and good luck this next week against Brandon Bender. It's going to be an interesting fight. I definitely want to see how it pulls out together. I, I definitely want to see, you know, see how Travis is doing up there now in the middle of Utah. Hey, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. It's an honor, and I appreciate your time. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, bud. Talk to you soon. Thank you. See ya.